from California, Matt Dugan. Uh, he works with all the top TikTok influencers in the space. Um, he has over 100 million followers, like, through uh, all his clients. Through all his clients. And just please give him a round of applause. Hi, everybody. How are you? So, you know, I love New York. And New Yorkers. Yeah. So, it's very warm here, though. Yeah. So, so this panel is all about TikTok and TikTok. All the big brands you see today work with his clients, so it's cool to see a breakdown of like what's happening, how it's happening, and what you can do to, you know, take advantage of TikTok. So now I want to introduce one of the one of the rising TikTok influencers in Elijah. He has a channel with over two million followers, and he's getting millions of views every single day, right? Yeah. Yes, every single day. Please give it up for Elijah. Elijah. All right. All right, welcome everyone to the panel. So the way we're gonna uh, do this panel is a little bit different. So we'll, we'll obviously we'll hold our uh, questions for the end. Uh, we'll definitely hold time for that. Uh, but I'm going to ask some questions and then I'm going to answer some as well because there's probably gonna be some brand related questions as well. Right. Uh, but if you want to introduce yourself, uh, go ahead. Sure. Hey everyone, uh, I'm Elijah Nelson. Uh, me and my siblings we started a TikTok channel back in December, and in 11 months we've got 2.3 million followers. Uh, some of our videos have gotten over 28 million views. Um, there's a lot of engagement. Uh, I was also originally an actor, and I'm still a working actor. I've been on like Nickelodeon and Disney Channel, and in 2020, I'm doing a CBS show, Interrogation, and 911 Love Star. So yeah. Cool. All right. Um, well, my name is Matt Dugan, so I uh, run Envision Entertainment Partners out of LA. Uh, we specialize in working with influencers and transitioning their brands from uh, digital to film, TV, um, literary properties, etc. So we, we kind of do a transformation process there. Um, so yeah, let's get this panel started. Good. Um, so the first question is about understanding TikTok. Mm. You know, you see it everywhere, it's in the news, it's become this viral app in a way that kind of went beyond what Vine was and it's actually stuck since its acquisition. Right, right. How did you first get involved? Which, by the way, TikTok used to be an app called Musically, yeah. and then ByteDance bought Musically, and ByteDance already had a TikTok app and they merged them into one. So, how did you find it? Was it as Musically or was it as TikTok? So I started back in December. Uh, it merged into TikTok, I think, last summer. Yes. So it had only been around for a few months, but it was still very loose, and no one really knew what it was at the time. Um, yeah, I started in December. Um, it's a great platform. It's grown. It's explosive. Um, as you can see, we started TikTok because we like, tried our hand at YouTube, but as you can tell, like YouTube and Instagram and other platforms, it's very like, there are a lot of barriers to entry. Like, you can't get on unless you have so many followers, like, where you start. Versus with TikTok, um, we just started creating videos there and people liked them and they just took off and blew up and if people keep liking them, they keep rolling out. And so that's how we grew the following we have now. Um, yeah. Wow. And uh, to give you some context, so uh, obviously we work with uh, Elijah and then you guys have a, a bro another brother's channel are also on TikTok. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Nelson Brothers, the Nelson Boys. Yeah, yeah, they have a million followers and they started a little bit after us. Yeah. So talk about two TikTok channels in the same family, all over a million. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so my client, uh, Kristen Hancher, she's got about 20, almost 24 million on the app. So she started back from when it was Musical.ly. Um, would you say that, because I'm sure you had a chance to work with Musical.ly back in the day, or your siblings did, what do you see as the key difference between what it was as Musical.ly and then as TikTok now, now that you guys are using it full time? Right, right. I, I gotta be perfectly honest, I was not into Musical.ly. Like, like, I didn't really engage with it much. I mean, I saw a little bit of Vine. Um, the main things I've noticed because you know I'll interact or hang out with uh, TikTok or TV music players. Uh, the biggest thing I've noticed is just the content's changed. It's a much wider array of content. Like you can have brands on there, you can have public speakers, you can have the musically content, which was like dances and lip syncs and stuff like that. But there's like everything on there now, which is to me the biggest difference. Hmm. And with your background, you know, because a lot of the TikTokers uh, just kind of get on the app and they don't have any film or TV background. You do. How has that been for you as a working actor also being on TikTok? Dude, it's great. Um, I've noticed that it's, I don't know, it came easier to me because like like I said, I've done Nickelodeon and Thunderman's and it's actually cool because like 
my, my audience thinks it's cool because they'll be like, whoa, you were on the Thunderman's or whatnot. Um, but you know, I found it easy because to me it's the saying, you just, you know, you create the idea and it lets me be much more creative than I would be as an actor. Um, but I don't feel like it's necessary. I feel like you can come on, most tech doctors I know don't have that background. So it's nice for me because I have that extra little spin on it. Um, but I, yeah, I don't feel like it's necessary. You're one of the only ones that I know that's so working out right, right. right. So yeah, yeah. That's pretty. That's pretty cool. There. Um, walk us through the process of making a TikTok. By the way, a TikTok is a very short form video clip uh, that is vertical, and it takes a lot more than just five minutes to make it. Sometimes oh. upwards of an hour, hour and a half. Walk us through that process and what equipment you use to make them. I will say we had one TikTok that took us two days to film. So we oh. spent like several hours on one day, but like we didn't like it. Because, yeah, so TikToks range from anywhere from like four seconds to 60 seconds, but most sit around 15. Um, and we wanted it to be really tight. We're like, nah, it's not good enough, so we came back the second day. Um, and so the process really, that's what's so cool about TikTok, is everyone does it differently. Some people just use their phones, they like set it up in a corner of their room that's clean. Uh, they get a ring light and they just like <laughs> do talks or lip syncs or dances or whatever they want. Um, some people do like their park portraits really anything. For me personally, um, we have a nice camera that a DSLR that we use for YouTube. And so we use that and you know we just like film skits. Well primarily skits. So we like skits in the living room or at a park or anywhere. Um, and then we come up with the idea. It's pretty just like on the go like morning up we'll be like oh that's the idea. Film it that afternoon, get it out that evening. Um, and you have to because you're just creating videos day after day after day. So so for these skits and sketches they're not really scripted out. You pretty much Go and you're like, all right, we're gonna make some TikToks and then figure it out as we go. Do like outline style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, everyone does it differently. Like when I went to VidCon uh, a few months ago, we met a lot of like the biggest TikTokers. Some of them like have no game plan going into it. They're just like, hey, let's film something, and then they find something there, and it's very like organic and on the, you know in the moment. Um, we tend to typically like script it out day before. Um, we're like, hey, you know, what should this be? And we script out the beats and then we do it. So, yeah. Did you ever use Vine? when Vine was big? Uh, no, not really. I mean, I enjoyed the app, and I was a consumer, but I didn't really post anything there, no. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So, uh, with uh, TikTok, per se, uh, how many videos do you post on average per day? So, like I said, we're a channel that more goes for like quality over quantity. Um, we know some channels that post upwards of like five times a day. Like, it's insane. They go for like, little view rate per video, but they're, they're just cranking those suckers out. Yeah. Um, we tend to post anywhere from two to four to five times a week. So two to four a week. Um, and so we'll do like prep work, phone post, prep work, phone post. Is there a certain time that you post them or do you just kind of post them freely? Yeah, no, um, we, we try to find the times that are best. I mean, for us personally, the times that have worked are like, noon to one or four to five to try and catch like rather right after school or maybe like right before bed because kids these days you know they watch tiktok when they're supposed to be going to bed <laughs> and, yeah sure uh, and do you do you run it on la time or east coast time whenever you're doing your scheduling right i mean half of our audience is well, i think it's i mean we have a lot of foreign viewers and so we can't like hit the ideal time for all around the world obviously um and so we Tend to prioritize just like somewhere in the middle. That's why anywhere from one to four o'clock we found is nice because you still get the bedtime of East Coast, but you're still getting after school West Coast. Yeah. And do you make your TikToks? Because everyone's different. Some will make them just with their iPhones. Others will make them with like a Canon camera. What do you guys use to make those TikToks? Uh, like I said, we have a pen. Or no, yeah, Panasonic GH5 that we use. It's a DSLR. Um, but then sometimes if we're ever in like a public place that we're like, oh, we got to film a TikTok right now, we'll just whip out our phone film it and it works. Wow, and then whenever you shoot them on a professional camera, right, do you throw them into like Adobe, do you edit them there, or do you take them back to your phone and edit them? No, no, I use uh, Premiere, because I find it just gives me a little more control. But I know plenty of TikTokers, like I said, with sometimes more followers than us, will just use like iMovie on their phone, some do it in app, it really depends on your preference. And on the app, there's a hashtag section. Do you follow the hashtags when you make your TikToks? Or do you just kind of make up your own hashtags or no hashtags at all? So I would definitely encourage hashtags if you're growing or don't have a follow, you know, following at the moment. Um, when we first started, we actually got our following. No views, no like, I mean, yeah, we had done some acting credits, but we weren't really famous. Nobody knew who we were. Um, Jimmy Fallon did a hashtag about like, 
that was on the show, and we did a video there, and then that exploded with his hashtag, because his hashtag, he like promoted it on the show, and that got a lot of eyeballs in the hashtag, and we were like the top one, so that got like four million views, and that got us 40,000 followers right off the get-go, and then we used that sort of leverage, and we did keep doing hashtags uh, on TikTok as well, so you can use sounds to video. So what's cool about TikTok is you can pick songs, or certain sound clips from other creators, and you can lip sync to them, or use them for your audios, and if people really enjoy a certain type of sound, like the sound will become the meme. And then if they like that sound, they'll just scroll through all the videos using that sound. So sounds are hashtags as well. Um, and we did that starting off. Now we're bigger, we don't need to. We can just do our own creative content. Um, but yeah, we definitely encourage that if you don't have a current following. Very nice. And whenever you uh, post the TikToks, uh, do you have sort of a uh, you know collab mind focus where you want to place other people in them, or do you make them just with the group that you're in with? Uh, yeah, I know some people will do just single videos, or they'll include their siblings, right. or well, what is that process like for you guys? So yeah, I'm I love collabing whenever you know with other creators. I love to collab. Um, I haven't found as much like a need to collab because I, I do have siblings who have another account, so I constantly like use them for the other characters. Um, but I know some creators who it's just them by themselves, so they really need to collab if they want to get like uh, social interactions or character interactions or skits or you know what they need. So some people collab all the time because they have to. I haven't really found a need to. Very cool. And uh, whenever you first got started on TikTok. What was that moment that your videos started to circulate within the algorithm and were gaining heavily? Was there a certain video, or was it videos, or was it a hashtag you used? What was it that sort of made you guys go viral? Yeah, so like I said, when we first started, um, it was the Jimmy Fallon hashtag. And that got the eyeballs, and I got four million views, and then that like launched us. Was that before your brothers took off, or was it? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So our channel was around like a month or two before theirs. Um, so nobody knew who we were. We were just some kids making videos, and that one took off. Yeah. Wow. And what's the one uh, that was all over the explore or on the on the feed page, right? Because there was one that literally you opened the app, your guys' faces appeared right away. It was a pretty viral one, right? I, I mean, I'm, I'm very lucky to say we got a few. Which one? <laughs> Well, which one was that first one? So the first one, oh, oh the first one, um, was yeah. the one that actually took two days to film because we didn't oh, like the, the product. It got 24 million views. It got like 3.4 million likes. Um, and it was one where it was like a little story time. Just a short little story. Me and my sister and my brother, who's playing like a bully, like bumped into us. And um, like I start to get all up in arms, but he's just like a, like a jerk bully. And then my sister stands up to him. And that's something we found just really well um, on TikTok. There's a lot of like, you know, girl power stuff or a lot of things that you wouldn't quite notice. So like in the video, you'd expect like big brother to uh, like defend and take care, but she's the little girl like boom, being more powerful. Mm. And that one took off. Um, yeah, we've had a few. Yeah. And did it take off right away? Was it within the first 24 hours? Because you know, with, with YouTube, there's sort of different strategies on promotion and taking off and how it's important within the first you know, so many hours when a video goes live. What was it for TikTok? Was it within a day? Was it within a week? So yeah, TikTok's very short-lived. Like three days, you more or less know if your video's gonna go anywhere or not. Like after three days, if, you're, if your video hasn't exploded, it's not really going anywhere. Um, but our video took, Gosh, it took like seven or eight hours to really interaction. Like there was a slow rollout as the algorithm's like, all right, th these people liked it, keep rolling it out. All right, these people liked it, keep rolling it out. So most of our explosive hits, we've gone to bed and I'm like, yeah, they're doing all right. When we go to bed and then we wake up, it's like, oh, wow, this got 12 million, million views overnight. So overnight, you get a lot of views there. Wow. And then whenever uh, you guys are making these TikToks, right? Because, well, first of all, how many of you have TikTok in this room? Oh, wow, there's a lot, okay. Um, and how, who has not heard of TikTok? Okay, we got a couple, right? So um, how would you explain TikTok to those who do not have TikTok? Um, it's a short form video app where any creators, like I said, can post anywhere from 15 seconds to 60 seconds. Um, and it's literally anything goes there. 
I mean, obviously, you know, like they censor and make sure good stuff is on there because there's a lot of kids on there. But um, any type of content. Like I said, I know some dentists who are on there, lawyers who are on there, and they make like goofy, you know, videos in their dentist office, and kids love seeing that. Um, and so, really, anything goes. It's, to my knowledge, like the only like short form video app that was kind of a gap in the market there for a while after Vine went down. Um, and this just kind of took a space and people are loving it and it's just exploding. Mm. And it's interesting you mentioned how doctors and lawyers are using this for their business. Let's touch on that for a second. So for those who are entrepreneurs in here, who run shopping websites or whatnot, what advice would you give to them in sort of launching a TikTok, no matter what industry they're in? Yeah, like I said, no matter what you do, you can create a TikTok and it can do very well. Like I said, Dennis Lawyers, there's this one guy who shows like human anatomy on there, there's educational, so many things. Um, my number one advice would be to consume the app. Like an hour a day, just flick through the For You page, just watch video after video after video, even if you don't like the content, just to, for um, 10 days or two weeks, however long, to sort of get a grasp of what TikTok is. Because the content that does well on TikTok is not the same content that does well on YouTube or Instagram. It's its own sort of thing. So consume it, love it, and then you'll sort of start to get an idea of how you can make TikTok content that also features and supports your brand. And what were some strategies in the very beginning that you guys used to sort of take off outside of the creative and whatnot? What was it for you guys that you used to, to launch on? Um, yeah, for me, when we were first starting, it was hashtags and sounds. Um, that and those are the trending hashtags. So those are trending hashtags and sounds. So Spot in the app. Yeah, so like videos that we're seeing all a lot of big creators are doing this, people are liking it. You can also look at like the likes those ones are getting, because some hashtags people aren't crazy about. Um, yeah, we just found the big ones. And my number one advice would be to not just do the hashtag or challenge or sound as everyone else is doing them, because there's so many people like doing the same thing. You'll If you consume the app, you know how many copycats there are in there. Like a lot of creators will just like do the same thing. Um, put your own spin on it. So like for one of our videos, there was a challenge that was going around that was like making people upset. And it was like cringy content or triggering content where it's like, you know, messing up things in a row, right? And that was a big trend. Well, we were like, hey, what if we put our own spin on it? So we spin it and flopped it to making people happy. And we were like fixing those CD things and like doing, you know, things that you enjoy watching. And then that blew up like a million likes and like, Eight million views because people like the challenge but wanted a fresh spin on it. So that would be my advice. Hmm. And what about for those who are creators in the grill? Would you give that same advice to them or a little bit of a different strategy? Yeah, absolutely. Especially if you don't have many followers, that would absolutely be my strategy. Um, we've gotten to a point where now that we have followers, you know, we kind of have a built in sort of starter pack of views that are followers really love it, no matter if it's not connected to any hashtags or challenges, um, then it just rolls out and does its own thing. Let's talk about live for a second. So TikTok has a live streaming function on the app, and I know with Instagram, if you go live for at least 30 minutes in a time frame, it tends to help your sort of profile circulate more throughout the Explore page, right? So for you, with TikTok, have you found that your lives have helped you guys grow, or is it just a way to just kind of connect with fans? You know, I gotta be honest, I have not taken advantage of the lives nearly as much as I should have, because I've been so focused on videos. Um, yeah, I know a lot of creators who go live like every night. Um, it's also, they go live for hours. They go live for oh. hours, oh my gosh, I could not do that. But um, yeah, and then they can like get gifts, people will send them gifts of money, so I know for some people that helps supplement their income. Um, yeah, I found it's it's nice to grow your core fan base. Like obviously you have your core fan base, which are you're like most devoted, and then you have the other people that you're still trying to like convert to your core fan base. And so it's a nice way to just stay connected and personal with your core fan base. Because if you have those guys and they love your content, each video has a better chance of going explosive because you have more of a core following that can then like your videos and get your videos out there. Hmm. So now that we know about the basic functions of TikTok and what you need to do to get started on it, how do we make money? That's the million dollar question. Now I'm gonna comment on that in a second, right? Because we're all about making some money in here. We love our money. LA is expensive, so New York. Um, so, so what would you say for you has been key monetization for you guys? 
um, since you've started? What, what are some right. ways that you've been profiting? I will say, um, what, I read an article from like the creative director at TikTok, and she said that one of her goals for 2020 is to get more monetizing options for the creators. So I'm like, yes, thank you. Um, for us, it's a lot of songs. We work with a lot of, a lot of uh, record labels, because obviously songs are big on TikTok. I'm sure you all know Old Town Road. That started on TikTok. And that was a big challenge and trend. And that grew so big um, that that then just like exploded into the real world. Lizzo also, a lot of her songs, like Truth Hurts, it had been out for several months and wasn't as big as it is now. And then there were a bunch of trends using Lizzo's song. And I saw that everywhere. And then once that took off, so, and now that I listen to the radio, it's like TikTok song after TikTok song after TikTok song. So the music industry is crazy about TikTok right now. Um, and so yeah, they, we worked with big record labels like Atlantic Records. Um, we did one where we met in person with um, one of the artists and like filmed a video with them. Um, they pay us to promote their songs. Um, we've also done a few toy brands or, you know, yeah. Yeah. And whenever you're working with a brand, do they come at you with all these sort of, even a, a, a label, right? Do they tell you how to make it or do you do it how you want to do it with their guidelines? So I try to find the, like the happy medium. Um, and if you guys are wanting to work with creators, my number one advice would be to get their input on what the video should be. So like we've worked with some uh, people wanting to pay us and they're like, hey, do this video, like do it like this and then do that and then do that and then do that. But as the creator, from a creator's point of view, we know what our audience likes. We know why they're subscribed to us, what kind of content they're gonna wanna see. So the, the videos that have done best, that, we did one song where we promoted it with an artist and they just gave us like total creative control and that got six million views. Versus I've done some where they're like, hey, do it like this and that doesn't, hasn't done as well. So my number one advice would be to work with the creator to find out, you know, what does well for their channel. Yeah, so I'm actually gonna comment on this one. So, you know, us as a company, so my company, we've worked with brands all across the board in the beauty space and the tech space and, and the label space, music space, movies, TV shows, we've promoted it all. Um, and what I have found is that listening to the creator and letting them do what they do is the best. So if you're in marketing for a brand, or if you know you work with influencers as part of your job, I always say let them sort of, obviously you have guidelines and you guys have strict things and there's some legal rule and on the test. Uh, but just you know, listen to the creator, their management, take it in. And you know, because it, it does work better, even with the captions, believe it or not. If you make the captions very uh, fake, they do not work, uh, and nobody and nothing's going to convert. Because with TikTok, there's no way as of now to link out, so it's more of a brand awareness strategy and a hashtag sort of virality that people will go hopefully outside. But so, for instance, about this is. This was during TikTok, so this was about a year ago. I had a client who only had about four million on the app, and she promoted uh, some sort of chat fiction style app, and she ended up sending 35,000 downloads within the first two or three hours. And she had only four million, I think her video views were really a half a million. So she had like a super engaged audience over video views weren't as high, I mean, I mean half a million is high, but some's high. Uh, she was still able to convert that, and it was incredible. So it does work, it's just you need really strong captions and sort of that hook to, to reel people in. Yeah. Um, so yeah, listen to the creator. Uh, okay, so with the, uh, with all that said, with all the monetization and all that, has this TikTok uh, account helped you in other facets of media? So whether that's in film, TV, when you're going out for you know, auditions, do they look at your TikTok? Uh, yeah, so I haven't found it as much yet so far because the yeah, if I'm an actor as well and the Hollywood world is so hesitant of TikTok because it's so new and fresh and I'm like what is this? Yeah, well, why do you think that is? I think it's just because it's so new and fresh. But dude, Hollywood's catching on. I don't know if you guys know like The Rock's on there, Kevin Hart's on there, Ellen's on there. Stay four years. <laughs> Will Smith, exactly. The biggest celebrities are like waking up and getting on TikTok right now. So. I think give it a few months, Hollywood will very much respect it because the engagement is like way bigger than Instagram or the others. It's such a new explosive um, platform. Um, but I will say, I get stopped on the street like so many times now, more than I ever did as an actor, so I think that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> that was nice. So, okay, why do you feel 
this explosiveness right now? Because like when Vine got bought, it just kind of died. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So why do you feel that this is taking off? I, I kind of have an answer, but let's hear your take first. Okay. Um, your answer will probably be better. But, uh, it's, it, it filled a gap that everyone so desperately wanted. People loved Vine, and it just kind of went away. And um, this, to my knowledge, is really the only short-form media uh, app out right now. Um, and people are loving it. Um, like I said, the engagement is so there compared to other platforms. I'll also say it's really an awesome place for creative content. Like I said, YouTube, barriers to entry, versus TikTok, we just post videos, and if people like it, it keeps rolling out. So when you're scrolling through, through the For You page, it's what people like. So the people are deciding what they want to see and what they like. Um, it's just creating an awesome app. Here's the thing, I've been involved with TikTok when it was Musical.ly, so I was in there in the trenches, right? And what I saw, this is advice to anybody who especially works in tech or is building an app right now, if you have creators or influencers on your app, you need to foster and nurture them as a community and as a family. Musical.ly did this very well, and I feel that's the only reason why they succeeded was that they held that family together. In LA, in Santa Monica, they used to have what was called the Musical.ly House, which was this very weird office space looking building that looked like a house. I don't know. But they like had a ball pit that the, the kids could jump in. You know, they had you know rooms where you can make TikToks. They had a stage. I mean, it was just epic. And then they would bring in sort of youth group style or you know kind of after school type activity. Like at least once a month, they would throw a party there. They would bring the news by. You know, you'd have uh, you know JoJo Siwa rolling in. You know, I mean, they would bring uh, all the big kids and. You know, no matter, you know, sort of if you, if you had a, like a half a million or 10 million on the app, they brought you in and they, they treated you as family. So my biggest advice, if you're doing an app, treat your creators right, nurture them as a family, and you'll go far. You know, that's with Vine, you know, they didn't take care of their creators, and I think that that was their downfall. So, yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely add to that. The, the TikTok community is very supportive of each other. Like, when I, I have the phone numbers of several big creators, and we're just like constantly asking each other, hey, like, how are your videos doing? What's going on here? And um, do they still do those groups? Because I know back in the day of Musically, us managers were not in them. Uh, but they would do them with the uh, the TikTokers or Musically, or yeah. they would do this sort of group chat. And, they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah they absolutely. still do that. Yeah. Mm, very interesting. All right, um, so I think that's all the questions that I have. I'm gonna open it up to the floor now. I saw your hand raised first, so I'll go first. Quick question. You talked about the live feature with TikTok. Could you maybe get into it a little bit more about how it works? Is it similar to Facebook Live or Instagram Live? Yeah, so I mean, a lot of my clients, uh, well, one of my clients got big through Musical.ly by doing lives a lot. Uh, it was obviously a different algorithm, a different app back then. Um, you know, the way this works is you can actually monetize it through GIFs, and they're like interesting little cartoon-looking characters. It's like little monkeys and, and all that. They're, they're donations. They're, yeah, they're donations. Uh, and, and basically, you can you shop them out, and there's a true monetization value there. Um, and, and some of them, I mean, there were some TikToks that you make in $10,000 easily in a month or more. Um, Oh, 10,000 followers? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, and, and, and that I think is, so so basically back before you could just go live, and now I think they did recently change that. Um, but yeah, there's like pretty money off. But then with the, once, you, once you hit that threshold, does the video stay on there? Does it disappear like Instagram for 24 hours? It, or it, it disappears. Your video's up there as long as you're live, and then once you're done going live, the video's gone. Oh, once you, once you go off the air, then it then it mm -hmm. okay. With Instagram and Facebook, you can save the lives. Yeah. With TikToks, they yeah they just okay. go go into oblivion. Good to know. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Um, as far as like I know on Instagram, like you can contact influencers and stuff like that, and they can make money off people like that. Is that the same with TikTok? Yeah. So um, all of my uh, talent have their our email in the bio. Um, I think it used to be like talent and mattoogan.com and my name would appear in like 30 creators, but then we changed it because, you know, mattoogan.com is amazing, but we you know, want to go a little bit more of a quick review. Uh, but yeah, basically the, the creators will have an email in their bio, and sometimes you're reaching to the creator directly, or sometimes you're reaching your manager. Yeah. And 
And if they don't have that, most have links to their YouTube or Instagram, and then you can no, reach out to them there. Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, I was curious, you being an actor, do you have an agent already or, or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Theatrically, I do. Um, with social media, I mean, it's, yeah, it's not yet, but um, I do with theatrically, yeah. Yeah. So, so is he asking you about your work with TikTok or is nothing that you discuss with your agent? Uh, yeah, no, I brought it up to my agent. My agent's like, wait, that was you because they saw the viral video. Uh, they thought that was a, a good laugh. Um, yeah, like I said, Hollywood's just now waking up to it and the impact it has, but I think it'll really take off in the next few months. A lot of the industry, at least in LA, I know it is, they don't understand fully social media. A lot of the agents who have been doing it for a long time, they kind of disregard social media and, and turn their nose towards it, I think, because they're scared. Uh, it's a very, very wild west, and they realize that maybe their jobs could be out of style soon. Um, but the reality of it is, you know, you, you do need an agent, um, and, but more so for film, TV, and commercial opportunities. Like, that's a good question. Uh, somebody had their hand in the back there. Yes. Hmm? Oh, wow, we're running out of time. Okay, did you have your hand up? Yes. I did. I just when um, you create videos, what do you think are the ingredients to a good video? Like... That's a great question. Um, like I said, the content that TikTok wants to see, like they have certain things that they enjoy seeing. Um, obviously, good lighting, make it look good, make them look like you're not going to waste their time. There's a lot of videos on there with small lines that, you know, waste your time because they're not well done. Um, and yeah, I found almost anything. Um, just like I said, consume it, love it, you'll get a feel for what they like. Uh, for us personally, I found social interactions work really well for videos, like people interacting with each other work, but um, for us, but uh, creators do almost anything, just as long as you are, are giving the audience what they want to see. I did want to add real quick, uh, if any of you have any questions uh, that we don't answer up here, feel free to email me or DM me on Instagram. It's um, If you want to write it down or type it in your phone, it's Matt, M-A-T-T, at E-E-P, so that's Evan, Evan, Paul, talent.com, it stands for Vision and Taylor Partners, uh, but that's too long for domain. And then uh, Matt Dugan Official on Instagram is my Instagram, and then would you yeah, shout, out your, yeah, shout, out, yeah, shout yeah. out your socials. Yeah, uh, I'll also be around afterwards to answer any questions you guys have. Um, our TikTok is Shiloh and Bros, um, and the email is just Shiloh and Bros at gmail.com. Cool. So we'll, we'll uh, take a couple more questions. I see your hand on there. So there, TikTok on their front page does have like a trending feature of hashtags, um, which will often go with sounds, but that's like handpicked from TikTok. So that's sometimes a good gauge, not always. Like I said, my best advice would be to literally just like go through the free page. Trust me, you will start seeing songs popping up. If you see a song pop up like three times or something, you know that's a trending hashtag. And you can go to the sound or the hashtag, click on it, and then just scroll through those to see how those do if people are really liking that. I will say this TikTok does tend to boost more original content. So the more original you can be, that that's what's getting good. The lip syncs are less about the internet Sorry. Yes. Quick, two questions. Um, how many how do your followers compare on uh, TikTok to Instagram, and how is your influence compared on TikTok to Instagram? Yeah, um, I've found the TikTok audience is much more engaged. You know, with Instagram, it's a picture. You like it, you move on. Um, but with TikTok, you're seeing video of their life every day, so it's much, much more engaged. One of our posts got like 15,000 comments on it. Um, yeah, it's we're, we're trying currently to convert them to Instagram and YouTube just to get multi-platform brand. Um, gotta be honest, right now it's a little slow to convert them, like, you know, to, to convert them to other platforms. But uh, yeah. But how, how many followers do you have on? Oh, so we're primarily TikTok. I'm trying to ramp up my Instagram and get that going. Um, Instagram is very small right now. Um, I think it's like 9,000, but we're, I'm just now starting to grow it and really uh, go into that. And then TikTok, obviously, 2.3 million. Uh, yes, you in the back. What are the main differences between TikTok and Snapchat? Because I know Snapchat is like a, 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 a
Snapchat. You know, I never really got into Snapchat. Um, I know that Snapchat's more it's more story based content. Story based, yeah. yeah. I don't know. You know Snapchat. Better. Yeah, I mean with TikTok. Okay, okay. So basically, the key difference is Snapchat. You know, they're like Instagram stories. Those are stories. Whereas with, I mean, you can make stories on TikTok now too, right? Uh, not that I know. Oh, I think it's a new feature. Oh, is it? Wow. Yeah. So it's just more of a yeah. Platform based. Yeah, yeah, Snapchat's yeah. more like your daily life, like since your daily life, versus TikTok is more like products. Yeah. And we'll, we'll, uh, we'll take one more question. Anybody else? Yeah. yeah. So, speaking more broadly, what do you, why do you think there's so much more engagement on TikTok? Is it they take away the friction for engagement, or is it just the way they kind of like uh, enable the users to engage? Or maybe it's demographic too. I'm just well, kind of curious right. what the core of it is. I, I think it's a little bit of everything. I think one, it's fresh and new, so everyone's like so excited about it. Um, and yeah, it, it's it's a lot more open to people engaging. Like I know several creators who have like conversations with their fans in the comments. Um, and and the audience is just little little younger. Um, and they're a lot more engaged. It's just new, exciting, and fresh. Yeah. Okay. Thanks everybody for having us. Thank you. Right now, TikTok 101. I'll be around if you guys have any more questions. Likewise.